Hello everybody, loyal ITPM followers. How are we doing today? Let's, uh, let's test the Q&A area first, please. Uh, on the right-hand side, you should see uh, the Q&A area. If you can just post in the Q&A, your uh, location, please. Okay, this is looking good. Right, so uh, I'm gonna have to fly solo in terms of uh, admin and uh, presenting as well today. But uh, of course we have both Gunter and Phil on as well to uh, take us through their numbers and the presentation. Uh, before we get started, we are waiting for uh, people to come into the room. Uh, probably take a few minutes before uh, everyone figures out how to get into the room properly. Um, I wanna pose a question to the room uh, obviously, this presentation is called uh, Meet Gunter and Phil, but I want to focus on the second part, uh, on the road to riches. What do we think, what do you think uh, the subject of the presentation is about? So what do we mean by on the road to riches? Let's see what you guys think or expect this presentation, what you expect this presentation to be about. Have a think about it, post your answer in the Q&A. I'm noticing some uh, names here that I'm going to ignore because I know you guys are alumni and have been around for a very long time. So you're obviously going to get the answer right. So yeah, quite a few of you have hit the mark here um, about getting achievable long-term consistent returns okay that's what we're going to be focusing on today and uh, you know we're bringing in Gunter and Phil who were on this year's Thailand program uh, starting in April April 22 and they started trading with ITPM uh, in the first week of May so we're going to be looking at the period uh, first week of May up till the monthly options expiry, September 16. OK, so that period was 21 weeks. OK, so in effect, they're not at the moment what you could call uh, outstandingly awesome, consistently profitable traders for a very long time. Right. They're 21 weeks into their journey. So they are on the road. And that's why we've called it On the Road to Riches, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen now and uh, get started. We do have a lot of um, first timers on today. We do have some alumni, but mostly people are new here to ITPM. So uh, we're just gonna do a bit of housekeeping first. Um, if you do have connection issues, just please refresh your page uh, before spamming the Q&A area or you can change browser most of the time. Um, when there's a problem uh, with your connection, I would say 99% of the time, it's, uh, it's the problem is on your side, okay? If you have repeated problems, just tr if you, and you're not using Google Chrome, switch to Google Chrome, okay? It's the best browser for uh, this webinar platform, Livestorm. Uh, a gentle reminder, uh, all content is owned by ITPM. It is our copyright and intellectual property. Most importantly, uh, questions. The questions that you post today in the Q&A area, you know, we only have limited time with these webinars, guys. So we've got two hours. During the presentation, you can post questions. If I'm not presenting, I'll answer them. Uh, if you want to direct questions to uh, Gunter and Phil, uh, they, will, and they will pick up a lot of those questions as well that I've directed to them. But they do need to be on topic of the presentation. Um, nugget Hunter questions, we're just not doing that ever at ITPM. Nugget Hunter and Bottom Feeder questions. If you're thinking of coming onto a, one of our webinars ever, and uh, the only reason you're coming on the webinar is to ask us our uh, view on a stock that you're down 70% on, and uh, you're wondering whether we think you should hold it or sell it, we're never gonna answer that question, guys. Especially, you know, questions on popular retail trader inst instruments, uh, like uh, gold, Bitcoin, 
uh, favorite meme stocks, all of this nonsense that you get up to in the media and uh, waste your hard earned money on. We don't answer any of those questions. So we're a school. We teach you how to do things for yourself to a professional level standard. We're not a copy trading service. So we don't allow bottom feeders, nugget hunters and bums into ITPM. Okay. We teach you how to do things for yourself properly. Now, uh, we have withheld uh, both Gunter's and Phil's surnames uh, from the presentation. And that's essentially just to stop, you know, thirsty retail traders uh, attempting to get in contact with them via different, different ways, usually by social media. And why would people want to get in contact with them? Because they're looking for shortcuts and hacks, looking for help, uh, looking to, you know, get around uh, working and, you know, making this a success. Unfortunately, you've got to do the work, guys. What you're going to see today is the hack. There is no shortcut, okay? So we've withheld their surnames, so you can't get in touch with them, okay? Of course, you can ask them questions. That's the privilege of you being on here today. Now, if you like what you see during the presentation and you want to be on our next uh, Thailand program uh, in 2023, uh, we will be meeting in Thailand April 20th to 29th. Uh, you get everything included at ITPM and you get 10 days uh, in Thailand, Phuket, in a five-star hotel, and you get taught by me, Edward Sheck, Raj Malhotra, and Anthony Isa, and then you choose your mentor uh, for completing your 12-week program afterwards, okay? So if you're interested in that, just send us a message through that URL at the top of the screen, itpm.com forward slash trader dash mentoring. Uh, we are accepting applications now for remote mentoring programs, uh, in Q1 of 2023. So any of the guys on the screen there, uh, you can make an application. If you can't make it to Thailand physically, you can do a remote program where, where we teach you for 12 weeks over Zoom. So the next intake is for the first week of January, 2023 uh, for a 12 week program, uh, but you need to book it a quarter up front. So we're taking the bookings now, okay? Okay, a little bit about myself. Uh, I kind of get tired having to repeat this all the time, but we'll just run through it anyway, because we do have a lot of first timers on here. So I graduated uh, university in uh, the year 2000. I went to Manchester University, uh, studied economics, and I was hired in 1999, uh, one year before I graduated into Goldman Sachs. So started at Goldman in New York uh, in 2000, moved to the London office. So I was, in, uh, I was on the pan-European equities trading desk at Goldman Sachs. I was then headhunted into Lehman Brothers in 04, and then into JP Morgan in 06. Uh, left the investment banking side of the industry, uh, 2007, traveled the world for a year, uh, went back to the UK, did a TV show, which I'm sure some of you have seen on this uh, webinar today, uh, called Million Dollar Traders. Uh, and then when that was aired, after it was aired, I went traveling again for another year, um, went back to the UK, and uh, set up ITPM in London, uh, tested it for a few years, you know, just doing a presentation once a month for uh, nine months a year, and then uh, realized that the problem wasn't just in the UK, it was global. So then filmed everything, put it online, and uh, was probably one of the first guys to ever, you know, get this, uh, get content of uh, from a professional trading level uh, onto, uh, the internet where it was accessible for everyone globally. Um, so 2013 took it global. And then, uh, to be quite frank, uh, because I got back into the swing of things of trading and also with ITPM, things really took off and, uh, decided to get a lot more tax efficient and, uh, move to Singapore. So emigrated to Singapore, uh, set up family office infrastructure for investing and trading. Uh, the Singapore company owns ITPM. And then, uh, this year, Earlier this year in January, I uh, moved to Phuket, Thailand, where I am now. So for those of you that don't know, there's a bit of confusion out there about what ITPM actually does. So we'll clear this up. It's always good to know, to understand it properly. Um, right now, we've got over 1,250 retail traders globally who are trading their own capital, okay? Now, within ITPM, the, the retail trader capital where they're trading their own money is about $75 million as it stands right now. 
Um, and then the corporate assets under management. So that's money that we have within the ITPM infrastructure that we're able to deploy to talented institute traders is up to $15 million on power of attorney. So we have about $90 million on margin and that gets leveraged. So typically we're leveraging up between 400, $500 million of risk and that's between equities and equity options. Now to become an institute trader, so one of those 1,250 guys, you've got to take our online educational programs and or complete a mentoring program with one of the trading mentors, okay? And now we have a minimum of $25,000 deposit on margin after you've done your education. So normal ITPM, tra uh, ITPM trader sizes, you're looking at 25, 50, 100, 250, something like this. Most guys will be around the 35 to 50 mark who come into ITPM. Um, but the average now is, uh, is about 60,000. Now, the, there is no obligation uh, to join ITPM once you've done our online education, okay? You can do the online programs, disappear for a year or two, come back and become an institute trader. That's totally fine. You know, everybody's got different circumstances. Um, so if you wanted to do our online education then come back later, that's totally fine. You basically get classed as alumni. So you're a, you become alumni of the school and that gives you the right to come back anytime in the future and join as an ITBM trader. So let's put some uh, context on this before uh, Phil and Gunter get going with their track records and their stories about how they've uh, experienced ITPM and what they've been doing since they joined. So let's put a bit of context on this. So when we're trading those account sizes, $25,000 up to a million dollars, these are retail trader account sizes, okay? we target a 50 to 100% return per annum. Now that's based on an underlying annual, an underlying portfolio volatility. So the annualized volatility of equities, the underlying portfolio of 25% average, okay? But that has variability. So sometimes it's 20%, sometimes it's 25. Uh, in crazy markets, it can be 30, 35, 40. Um, but that gets leveraged with equity options, okay? So that, uh, volatility gets leveraged by using options. So what we're doing here is we're, we're taking a long short portfolio management approach on accounts that are 25,000 uh, to half a million. Typically, we're going to have eight to 12 positions with, uh, with account sizes that are 500 and above. It's going to be a bit more diverse, like 12 to 14 positions. Um, above a million, it's probably going to be 15, 16 positions, but no more than 16, okay? Now, Gunter and Phil were on the Thailand program and they were mentored by me for 12 weeks afterwards, okay? So they were taught by me and Edward Sheck in the classroom um, over 10 days in Phuket, Thailand, and then they traded live for 12 weeks and then they continued to trade uh, by themselves. And they both started with $100,000 in their account and they began trading in the first week of May, 2022. Now, by September 16th, the monthly options expiry, they'd achieved uh, the following returns. Gunter up 80%, Phil up 60%. So you can see in 21 weeks, they're, they're already way ahead of target. You know, if we're targeting 50 to 100% returns per annum of 25% volatility, work that, work that out in terms of a sharp ratio, okay? So over an entire year, okay, if, you're, if you've got... 25% volatility in your portfolio and you knock in 100%, you've got a sharp ratio of four, okay? Which is outstanding for a retail trader. But with equity options, it's very, very probable. You can do it if you put in the work and you really understand what we're doing, okay? If you get a 75% return, sharp ratio of three, 50% return, sharp ratio of two. So what the, the return that you get out of your risk is very important, okay? And the way we do things is a very particular way in terms of long, short equity options, portfolio management. And of course, Gunter and Phil are gonna show you uh, what they did and you'll be able to figure out how we do things properly here. Now, those guys at ITPM who make the 50 to 100% returns, um, we call these guys the right tail because we have a distribution of returns. So we have a left tail and a right tail, okay? 
the right tail winners at ITPM, they're making 50 to 100% returns per annum. And we've also got a lot of guys who actually achieve over 100% per year. And if Gunter and Phil continue on their path that they're on now, they should be knocking in 150, 200, 250% returns in year one. That remains to be seen, but they're on the road right now to those numbers, okay? Now on the uh, left tail losers, of course we have losers. That's always gonna be a situation in a big community of 1,250 guys. But typically they're not losing a lot of money. They'll lose five, 10, 20% of their margin typically, okay? But why does that happen? Well, it's because first of all, we give everyone the opportunity. You know, we don't stop people coming into ITPM. Anyone can show up, take our online programs, and as long as they pass their exam, we're going to accept you as an institute trader, okay? Then it's up to you to actually do the work. Now, a lot of people show up and they don't do the work afterwards. You know, they take online programs. A lot of people uh, think that just because they've taken an online program, all they have to do is then put a bunch of positions on, uh, log out of their trading account, come back a month later and cash in, right? Of course not. You actually have to be consistent. If you want to get consistent returns, you have to put in consistent work. You have to show up on a weekly basis. And it's all about trade ideas. On top of that, uh, trade structuring, you've got to have diversification. And you've actually got to trade actively as well. So you've got to make decisions every week, right? So most of the people on the left side of the returns distribution, they're not losing because they're not smart. They're not losing because they're stupid. They've been through our online programs and that takes a bit of effort to get through the online programs. And it takes a, a certain amount of intelligence, okay? Um, it's, they're, they're not losing because of that. They're losing because once they've done that and they open their trading account, they choose to do little to no work and properly implement what we teach. Okay, so they're not showing up basically. And the majority of the right tail winners, so you know, the guys that do well, these guys who are making 50 to 100% and the 100% plus returns, um, most of those guys who are in the right tail, those guys are the ones who show up. These, these guys are the ones that are really uh, committed. And generally speaking, and it's the majority of guys that are in that uh, annual returns uh, level. Um, they've done a 12 week mentoring program, a remote program or a Thailand program because they're really committed to doing it. And they obviously get one on one instruction after they've done an online program. OK, now it doesn't mean that if you do our online programs, you can't make money. Of course you can. There's plenty of guys that are doing 20, 30, 40, 50, 50 percent plus. OK, but the majority of the guys that make the crazy returns are the guys that have done. Uh, remote or Thailand mentoring programs, okay? And for those of you that don't know, uh, this is what we teach, okay? So it's a pro trader systematic framework, long short portfolio management, 20 to 60 days. We're split into two parts here, theory and implementation. So what you're looking at on the left-hand side, uh, it starts off as a step-by-step -step process to actually becoming a consistently profitable trader, okay? So we start with fundamentals. We generate fundamentally driven trade ideas based on macro and microeconomic factors. Uh, they're split into quantitative and qualitative processes and you generate ideas and then you have to time your ideas. You have to structure your ideas. And then once your positions are on, you obviously have to manage the risk, okay? It's split into two parts because when you're actually learning to become a consistently profitable trader, you have to learn the theory first and then you have to implement okay so if you do the theory first you're doing your online programs when you implement you either self-trade or you do a mentoring program first and then self-trade afterwards but the key here is being able to claim that you're a good trader that you're a professional level trader okay to get to that level it's going to take a year and of course you can do this in your spare time you know both gunter and phil they're busy guys and uh, they're committing probably in, in the beginning, 15, 20 hours a week around that number. And then it drops afterwards. OK, so in the beginning, if the workload is uh, a little bit upfront, but it can definitely be done. 
holding down a full-time job. And then after a month or two, it can drop, uh, not massively significantly, but it might drop from 15 to 20 hours to be 10 to 12 hours a week, something like this. But you've got to understand when you think of your first year, the effort and consistency that you need to put in, in say week 45 of your first year is the same amount of effort and consistency that you're going to be putting in in week 10. Okay. You have to be showing up on a consistent basis, but essentially over a year to 18 months, we need to see 150 traits. Okay. And certain statistics that we can discuss later, but for you to be able to claim that you're a professional level, consistent, uh, consistently profitable trader, you need to have got that first year under your belt, 150 trades. So you've got statistical significance and uh, hit certain statistics. Okay. Now, in terms of uh, trading mentors at ITPM, let's pose a question here. What, what, what do we think the job is of a trading mentor at ITPM? Well, let's start with what it isn't, okay? It definitely isn't getting the results for the students, so doing it for them, okay? What does that really, what does that involve? What would that look like if we did that? That would be spoon feeding them trade ideas. So Gunter and Phil would come on the phone to me every week and I would say, oh guys, did you get my email? I sent you 10 trade ideas. What, which ones are your favorites? Let's put them on. And then when, I, when we put them on, I actually log into their trading account and trade for them, right? Of course, that's not how we do things as a school, okay? We're not effectively making the money for them. Uh, they have to put in work as well, okay? So it's very obvious that if you're gonna be good as a professional level trader, you've gotta be able to do everything for yourself so you can be consistently profitable, okay? You should never ever be in a position where you have to rely on anyone or anything to sustain yourself as a consistently profitable trader. A trading mentor's job at ITPM, we show our students how to get into the 50 to 100% and 100% plus returns bracket and also what it takes to actually stay there, okay? And that consists of a lot of things, okay? Weekly trade idea generation, optimal trade structuring, how to build long short equity options portfolios properly to a professional level and also making sure that they're implementing solid uh, trading decisions on a weekly basis on entries and exits. So essentially risk management, and then also the statistics, like managing those statistics of their business and running the business properly. So if you think about it from a mentor's perspective, we've only got 12 weeks to get them there, okay? So we know at the end of 12 weeks when the phone goes down, what we have to have produced to enable a situation where they stand the best chance when they go off by themselves to become consistently profitable, okay? We get 12 weeks, so we work backwards from that and we build into it, okay? We know what's required and we hit every level into the 12 weeks, okay? So essentially, what are we doing? And this is you know, circling back to uh, the question I posed right at the beginning of the webinar. When I asked, what do we think this is in terms of the subject on the road to riches? Our jobs as trading mentors is not to force somebody to become successful by spoon feeding them and doing the trades for them. It's nurturing them. So what we're doing is, is putting them on the road, but they have to become rich themselves. Otherwise, they're never going to be successful, consistently profitable traders. They have to be 100% self-reliant, okay? So the best we can ever do is to put them on the correct path on the road to riches, but they have to get rich themselves. Okay, so I'm gonna hand over now uh, to Phil. And Phil's gonna take you through uh, through his journey at ITPM so far. Thank you, and Take it away. So let me share my, my screen real quick. So before we come to the fun part where I talk you through my trading journey, I will um, introduce myself real quick. So from 2010 to 2014, I studied project management and IT in Vienna. And since 2014, I'm working in the public sector in Austria, in the aviation industry. Right now I'm in the strategy department and there I'm responsible for the project management office. 
So when we come to my trading account and my margin deposit, you see here a screenshot from TradeStation. This is my broker. And this is my activity summary from March 2022. You can see here on the top starting account balance 13.2K. And you see here down here a deposit of 85K I did on March the 2nd. Plus I had 4.5K in open options positions which I will show you in a minute on the next screen. So a total deposit on margin of $102,690. So on this screenshot, this is my balance on March the 2nd. You see here total, total cash balance 98.2K plus you see down here market value of 4.5K and the market value. These, these are my live positions I had on March the 2nd. So overall account value of 102.7K. And I traded before, a few weeks before the Thailand mentoring, I started to get used to the process again. So I started to put on some small position positions. Um, yeah. So in a minute, I will jump right into my spreadsheet and show you really hands-on what we do during the mentoring. But I want to talk to you a little bit through um, this, uh, the process first. So every mentee at ITBM gets taught the same process of downloading the trading history from the broker platform, how to update the options monitor on a regular basis. For example, I do it every Saturday morning. You will see in, in Gunther's presentation that he does exactly the same thing. So you have a repeatable process. Everyone at ITBM or every mentee um, is getting taught the same process by, by the mentors. Um, so yeah, this is really, really the, the spreadsheet work we, we do on a regular basis. And now I will jump into my Excel sheet. So this is my trade station data dump. You see, um, it starts in the beginning of the year. So January and um you see here on the liquidation value of options zero because i had no open positions at this time and you see my account net worth was 18k in the beginning of the year and i traded also in 2021 a little bit in 2020 i will talk about this later in the presentation um yeah if i go down here you see end of february i started to put on small positions because i wanted to prepare myself so liquidation value of option increases and if i go down a little bit further second of march you see the deposit of 85k right here in the account net worth and if i go down further you will see in the the beginning of the mentoring in may and this is really when when start when we start to to build the portfolio and we we started to construct my portfolio so here you see that the liquidation value of options really accelerates and increases so in the beginning i had like eight eight thousand if i go down further 25 if i go down further 35 and so on so my my portfolio was being built the goal of the mentoring is that you have latest by week eight uh, full book so in my case eight to ten ten positions and what i want to show you on top here if we go all to the top on the right side you see my realized equity curve so this is um i will explain it to you the y-axis is the dollar amount of my realized equity and on the bottom you or the x-axis you have the numbers of trades and this one is sorted by exit date of the trade. I will talk um, you through this in, in a minute on, on another spreadsheet. Um, but basically it, it says that, for example, here trade four was later closed than trade 13. Um, yeah, and that's why it's not in an order from one to, to 90. You can see on this chart, pre-mentoring, I was more or less flat. Um, after or during the mentoring, I was able to increase my realized profit to 42k, um, and after September expiry, I was up 63.4k. I will now go to my my realized PNL, and this sheet is also if you do a mentoring, you will be um, quite familiar with this one. So I will zoom in a little bit and talk you through my 
my stats up here. So overall, I made 216K in 51 winning trades. This is a win ratio of a little bit less than 57%. I've lost 152.5K in 90, uh, 93 losing uh, in 33, 39 losing trades, sorry, um, which is a loss uh, ratio uh, or loss percentage of around 43%. So overall, I made like 63.4K. If I net off commissions, which were in my case around 3.5K, I have a net profit of 59 or 60K basically. And my utilist margin around 90%. This is because we don't want to use everything in our, our, our account. We want to have a little bit of an emergency fund left so we can put on new positions, for example, during expiry week. Um, so in my case, 100K account, I had 10 positions. Um, so each position uh, size was around nine, 9K each. Down here, you see my starting equity and my equity on September expiry, 162, 690, which is a 62% um, excluding commissions, 58% including commission, a return on invested capital of around 65%. On the right side um, here, top the R score. This is a number I'm not not very happy about because an institute tr trader should aim for a minimum of 1.5. The R score is uh, a number which tells you um, or a ratio on how much your winners are outperforming your losers. So yeah, this is definitely a number I need to improve over the next month, next few months or uh, yeah, six months or so, and. Kelly criterion, 26%. This is a number or an indicator that tells you how much you should deploy on your next trade. I don't really use it that much because I want to have equal position size all over my portfolio. And here, average, average days in the trade, 23 days. So this is well in line with um, the ITPM process of 20 to 60 trading days. Okay, I will now show you down here and let me make it here a little bit bigger. I, I will talk you through my journey, um, cum cumulative PNL. So pre Thailand, I was more or less flat. If I go down a little bit here, you will see I was up um, quite substantially here with a trade Rivian. And don't worry, I will talk a little bit of, about my trades in a second. Um, and at May expiry, I was already up 18 and a half K. So this was on May the May 20th. So three weeks into the mentoring i was already up 18 and a half k on may expiry if i scroll down a little bit further here you will see that i um yeah profit i did some trades with where i profited from but i also had some losers down here and and also some write-offs here so at june expiry but i managed to be up or double nearly my realized in at june expiry so i was up six, uh, 36 and a half K already in June expiry. If I go down further, you will see the end of the mentoring, July expiry, and I finished at 42.5 K. And down here, so since the mentoring ended, you can see here peak account value at 75.5. You may ask why I didn't choose this number, the 87.3 K, because you have to take a look here on the left side, all of these trades were closed on the same day. So basically my, my p &L after this day was at 65K, so August expiry. So um, yeah, and down here you see my max drawdown minus 25%. And after the mentoring, so between August expiry and September ex expiry, I lost a small amount, 1.6K. But I will um, yeah, talk you through this a little bit later. So if I go up again and zoom out a little bit, I will show you now some of my trades. So, OK, you see here, the first trade I wanted to talk about is here Rivian. So this was really one week into the mentoring. I was able to. Um, overall book 7k in profits 
And what I wanted to show you here is this was a calendar spread. So a long um, or, or a structure where I was long um, the June puts and I was short the May puts. And as you can see here, I had 32 contracts on the long side because one contract uh, of US options is 100 shares. So 3,200 shares on the long side and uh, 1,600 shares on the, on the short side. And I was able to buy them the long, the long puts at four dollars and sixteen cents, and I sold them for seven dollars and eighty-eight. So I made an overall profit of ninety percent or twelve k on the long side. Unfortunately, my short side was loss making, so I sold the short um, side for two dollars and ninety-four. So this was the credit I received in first place, but I had to buy them back at six dollars and ten cents so i was losing 5k but overall i was up nearly 7k on this trade so yeah quite um yeah my first uh, big profit um and if i go down further you see here again rivian i booked the profit if i go down further here you will see stanley black and decker this one was also a calendar spread but it this one was a um, uh, back ratio calendar spread. I don't want to get into much into details, but uh, it's a more aggressive structure than a normal calendar spread. Um, yeah, to 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 put it that way, and it was also sold in a ratio two to one, so two times the contracts on the long side than on the short side. I was long. Uh, I was right on the long side, so the stock immediately went down, and I was able to book seven k on the long side. But unfortunately, because this was an aggressive structure, I lost um, 6.2K. Um, so overall, I only made like $800 um, on this one, although I was right on the direction. And one thing I will show you here is advanced drainage system. So here, this is a short a short um, lag of the, of the trade. I will show you the long lag a little bit um, later. So here I was really able five contracts, so 500 shares, and I was able to sell them at $5.68 and bought them back for $1. So I got 82% of the credit back um, or 2.3K on the short leg. And if I go down, you will see some more Stanley Black & Decker here, monolithic power systems, some bunch. This was really one of my best or, or my best stock so far. I will talk about it a little bit later. And if I go all the way down, you will see here advanced drainage systems. This is the long leg of the, the short leg I've shown you um, a few seconds before. And here I was able to to book. This was also sold in a in a ratio two to one. And I was able to profit 125% or 11K. And if I add up both um, the 2.3K and 2 plus the 11K, I made 13.5K on this trade. So this is really the way you want a calendar spread to work. You collect the short credit and then the stock goes into your favor. You're long only and you profit on the long side. Okay, one more thing. If we go down here more, Levent, Advanced Drainage System, Bunch, Stanley Black & Decker. And one thing I wanted to talk about, the this is a tool I didn't, or a method I didn't know before the mentoring. Uh, Anton taught me this, but and I only had no ideas about options trading before the mentoring or, or the POTM, but um, the ability of raising credit. So you can see in August expiry, I was up 65 per um, K. I knew I will have losses around 25K. So I raised 11K in credits because I was selling short some um, structures I have shown you before, the advanced drainage system calendar spread, for example. Plus I was able to, to get 14K in credits. So I reduced my overall loss from 26.5K to only 1.6K. And this mainly or also because I had the ability um, to, to, to raise some credits. Um, yeah, so this is something I have no clue even exists before the mentoring. Um, yeah. Okay. So I will 
jump back to my my presentation we have i have talked you through these numbers my trade station data dump um i have yeah i can show you my statistics again so as you can see 60k um net profit after commissions uh, this is 58 percent or return on capital um, on invested capital of 65 percent my, my win rate a little bit less than 57 percent loss rate 43 percent and r score this is the number i want to really improve um yeah sometimes it i get nightmares um because i want to improve my r score <laughs> um yeah so yeah this is my my goal over the next few months to to increase this this number okay um i want to talk a little bit about my some winners um bunch i made 25k out of this one they're in the food manufacturing sector the idea was that higher input costs will squeeze their margin um, and at this time i also wanted to add a short and a defensive sector because remember we are constructing portfolios and not trading um single tr tr trading a bunch of stocks so i had at this time i had some um some cyclical shorts in my portfolio but none in the defensive sector so yeah played played out well advanced drainage system they're in the water management solution really good growth huge into plastic recycling and they um had really good pricing power so in times of rising inflation rising costs rising wages you you or i wanted to long companies that can pass on the price increases to the end customers um yeah which which advanced drainage system was able to monolithic power systems semiconductor they're into servers data centers automotive there was low supply high demand and also the fundamentals were great but the timing was also great because i was expecting a bear market rally in july and august so i was able to um, profit there on the long side and Levent, full integrated lithium company really high demand in evs secular supply shortage um yeah also traded also in the summer during the bear market rally um, was able to to make 10k out of it and rivian ev producer they had problems getting the production ramped up they were burning through a lot of cash and also they reduced their guidance and their outlook from 50k um, vehicles produced to 25 so they halved it and uh, yeah stock went went down quite massively then some of my losers uh, on holdings swiss uh, sports brand um, they're known for the shoes really good growth but timing was bad uh, yeah re market didn't like risk at this time was a full write-off netflix um, i bet you know this one the, the, the idea was that um, their subscribers uh, will continue to fall but they didn't it was only for one one quarter back at this time digital turbine they're into apps and pre-installed on on phones they were beaten down like every tech stock since 2021 or late 2021 same as uh, crowd strike cyber security i think there is a the theme of rising cyber threat uh, threats around the world will continue but um yeah and will be there for for a longer time but um yeah stock was uh, siding more or less uh, trading more or less uh, sideways um yeah and was a write off and sport radar it's a b2b technology provider for all kind of sports so for betting media le and and leaks and this was a tail risk trade to my portfolio so a trade where you um only deploy half of your half position size or a little bit less and you buy really um out of or very out of the money calls or puts but you load a bunch uh, load a shitload of contracts um to your portfolio so in my case it was like i think 150 contracts for 4k um yeah but stock uh, the price didn't increase as much as i um yeah as i planned for so um i will 
talk a little bit about my timeline at ITBM. Uh, I started in March 2019, bought the first PTM. One year later, I opened and funded my trade station account. I, I attended a war room, which is a format uh, or was a format back then of two two weeks of daily um, meetings or webinars where you learn about um, markets and traded the generation and options. Um, yeah, I traded a little bit on my own. I made some money. I lost some money overall. Um, and I had a constant feeling that I need help to implement the theory properly. So I purchased the, the Thailand April 2022 program and continued to trade on my own. I did then the PTM 2.0 and the POTM and I prepared myself um, before the mentoring. So I organized my pro process. I continued trade at the generation. I, I cleaned my spreadsheet. So I traded a, a little bit um, to be best prepared. Then I did the 10 days in Thailand, mentoring with Anton afterwards. So it was one Zoom call per week um, with some tasks, mainly at the generation. And then we did some risk management together. And yeah, since August, I'm trading on my own. And my weekly schedule looks like six to eight hours on Friday. Friday, so usually I don't work um, on Fridays. So this is really my main day where I do um, the idea, idea generation. Saturday morning, I update my options monitor. I go through every position and try to assess the probable outcome for next expiry and try to assess which actions um, to take. And I'm planning yeah, the week ahead. And during the week, it's usually like one to two hours um, overall. But for example, next week is, is option expiry week. So in an expiry week, it's it can be up to two hours a, a day. Um, depends on the positions, um, on, on the amount of um, expiries you have um, during this week. So in total, as Anton Mant uh, said before, eight to 12 hours a week. But uh, in the beginning, it was a lot more. Um, yeah, more like 20 hours a week. So, uh, yeah, summary, um, also where have I come from? Um, yeah, I educated myself about financial markets in 2016, mainly buy and hold index, uh, passive index investing. I was always interested in, in trading, but I couldn't find a, a repeatable and holistic process. Finally, I found it at ITBM. And over the last three, three years, I transitioned from passive index investing to actively manage my, managing my long short portfolio. During the mentoring, I learned how to construct a portfolio that fits my worldview. I learned how to structure trades for the best uh, risk reward. I, I learned how to manage risk properly um, and take control of everything. Yeah, I also learned how to stay market neutral in times of uncertainty or when you, when I don't have a strong macro view and I learned to stay in motion. As, as Anton said before, we don't put on 10 positions and then pray for three months and hope for the best. We always stay in motion and, and um, yeah, take actions. So thanks, Anton. You have definitely put me on the right road to success or riches and Right now, it's uh, it's up to me increasing my R score and delivering the results. Back to you, Gunter. Okay, Anton, shall I go straight ahead? Yeah, go for it. Okay, that's fine. I share my yeah. screen. So where, where did I come from before ITPM and um, where I'm now, I will tell you about me. So my first um, contact with fair option trading was actually during a vacation job in, uh, in a Swiss bank um, between a school and university. And I, uh, funny enough, I remember even what I traded. It was UBS long calls and uh, Occidental Petroleum. Uh, I bought long calls and looked up the rates the next day in the newspapers because we didn't have any, any online trading tools. And um, yeah, and then the bank forbid actually that we do that uh, during uh, our work time. So it was all, um, of course, I, then I joined University of Zurich. I studied business economics um, for a few years and um, I had already a private pilot license at the same time. And um, during my studies at the university, I actually also made a professional pilot school a, uh, for airline transport pilot license. 
um, in Switzerland and the USA. And as soon as I was finished with this um, education, I managed to get uh, to be employed as a corporate jet pilot on a citation jet in business aviation and acted actually well as a freelancer and as a as a student job, let's say, during my studies. And I flew around uh, Europe uh, in a citation. Uh, later on in 2002, I founded my own company together with a, um, a client of mine who wanted to start uh, buy a jet and start a company. And so I run my own jet charter company and um, also with partners together for the last 20 years. And that's why I am. The plane you see here in, in the picture is an Embraer Legacy. That's my current um, plane that I fly. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so shout out to Ben. He's also has a background as a, a pilot, as I know. <laughs> All right, let's go straight into my journey in uh, ITPM. I'm my trade station account, the funding part. So it, that started uh, in basically February in 2022. Um, my previous balance was $59 there. Um, I had made some small trades before. That was the, the residual value. Um, then I funded it with 80,000, uh, subtracted was some, were some uh, fees. Uh, so 79,982 were uh, added. And then uh, my goal was to, to reach 100,000 until the beginning of the Thailand program. So um, I had to somehow trade this 80,000 up to 100,000. And here you see a screenshot of my trades during that time. Actually, I started with 80,000 at the end of uh, February. Uh, I had, um, I went flat for the first moment, then I, it went down to 76, I went back up to 80, down to 71. Uh, then I managed to get it up to 100 by uh, end of March, um, a total roller coaster. Um, and this was trading uh, Tesla shares mainly and some options only in Tesla because I knew that from before. And um, well, I, I didn't know what I do when I, when I applied, I didn't apply ITPM um, uh, teachings yet uh, because I didn't, have, I didn't make the mentoring yet. Uh, so uh, it went down to 79 again, it went back up to 110 and instead of stopping there, of course, I, I continued and I went back, back down to 85,000 and one day before the Thailand program started, <laughs> I managed to get out at 100,000. So total total luck, total roller coaster and um, that's not something that you can sustain for, for the future. Another screenshot from my account, uh, 25 of April, that was during the, um, the Thailand program, actually. Again, you see the balance of 100,000. I had no live positions at this time and um, started my, my, my mentoring after then with a $100,034. Okay, so um, Philip talked about these points and that we uh, record the stats and download uh, the history from the broker platform. And uh, let me get right into that as well. So let's get over there. Wrong slide. Here we go. So this is again the, the dump from the trade station. And you see uh, again here February um, uh, net worth equity, 80,000 and the same numbers as we just saw. And then by April 22, you see, I uh, started with uh, 100,000 and I started to uh, also add slowly some options, um, trying to, to put half positions um, at the beginning and before the mentoring. And then on the um, beginning of May here, first mentoring session, uh, same as with Philip's account, you see that the um, um, liquidation value of options starts to rise. So we're building up to, to eight positions, scrolling further down. And uh, a, a constant rise in value until June the 10th, approximately, where I had approximately eight positions on. And this number uh, corresponds also with Philip's number, eight positions around uh, 60 to 70,000 um, in liquidation value when you, when you put it on. And then, uh, of course, we traded with the full portfolio uh, in, during the mentoring together with Anton, and you see um, the, the changes here in the in, in the value. Also, we can look at my curve of my, let me see here. Sorry. Uh, 
Aye. Here we go. So pre-mentoring is not on this um, on this graph. So it starts at um, the first mentoring with, with trade number one. And um, you see how, how during the mentoring, I managed to, to get the trade, uh, the value up to about 50,000. Here at the first line, the mentoring stopped. And then um, I traded by myself and ended at 80,834 80, by the 16th of September. You see a lot of um, some spikes here, the down spikes in, in this curve. And um, I will explain you later in, 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 the, stock, in, the, in the option sheet um in the structure sheet where uh, what what is this it's always when i have expiries at the end of the month so this is end of um this is expiry of july i believe this is expiry of august and this is expiry of september that's where i, I usually book my losers so um the, the winners are booked before and the losers always wait to the expiry date and that's why this curve um, uh, spikes down and uh, the, the big spike to the upside, we will see what, what that is. That was actually one, one big trade. Um, and I, I will show you that in a minute. Okay, from here, let's jump over to my, my trading stats. I'll make this bigger here. So <clears throat> during these four, four and a half months, I, have, uh, I had winners of $280,851 with 54 trades. Um, a win uh, rate of 60% and a loss of $200,000 with 36 trades, 40%, which makes a net profit of 80,834. If you subtract the trading costs for, for trade station, um, I'm arriving at $77,000 with a utilized margin of 86.7%. So, X commissions for trade station, it's 80.8%. Uh, if you include the com commissions, we talk about 77% with a, a rate of <clears throat> invested uh, capital of 89% almost. Right. Let's go to the cumulative P&L here. And we see how the numbers started to rise. Right, by May expiry, my account was only up uh, $2,500. That was only uh, like two weeks into the, into, into the mentoring. Um, but then in June, I was already at $34,913. So six, six weeks basically into the mentoring, up $34,000. Um, then on the, on, in the middle column, you see also the, these losses by expiry dates. Uh, the July expiry, that was a booking of the losers. So there you come down a little bit. But still, in July expiry, it was up $40,804 already. Then we came here to the end of the mentoring. I was up 50694 So 50% already um, during the mentoring. And... Here's the spike trade. I will just show you in a second. August expiry. That was the first expiry I traded by myself. 68,269. So further up. And September expiry, a very challenging one, but managed to get a lot of credits here, which I will show you also. Um, 80,834 by end of September. And after the mentoring, this means uh, from beginning of August to 16th of September, I made another 30,000 by myself. <clears throat> right. Let's go up here to look at some trades. And I have to make this a little bit smaller. All right. I hope you can see that. It's not too small. So my first trade I want to show you is a LabCorp, uh, a row 18. This was a short put. And uh, since we're trading calendar spreads, there's also a long uh, leg for that. And that, that's further down. That's uh, row 32 down here. That's the long leg for, for this short leg. Um, so the reason why they're not together here in the list is because the whole table is sorted by exit date and not by entry date. So the exit date was uh, earlier from the short. 
So you see option expiration was 20 May and the strike was $237 cost, four contracts, um, entry price. Um, big, uh, what I got for selling the, these uh, contracts was $2.33 times 100 times four, of course. And I was able to buy them back at five cents, which made my first uh, profit, well, one of my first profits here, $900 on a short. The long leg, let's jump down to line 32. Um, it was a June expiry, so one month later with a 240 strike, eight contracts, and I bought them at $10.11, sold them at $21.96 at the June expiry, made 9,482. So this, this trade actually uh, stays in my memory because it's the first time in my, in my trading um, experience that I make money on, on to the downside, right? So to, to sell, to buy a put or make money on a short, that's a, that's a real first time. It's, it's really fantastic to, to have that. <clears throat> right, another trade, uh, end phase, same thing. The short uh, was expiring uh, for 20th of May. Um, I sold at $3.83. Uh, bought back at 317. It was only four days in the trade. Uh, made only $198 because it was very short time and uh, it didn't go um, the, the down a lot in this time. So the long leg is just here and row 22. Um, that was a, a June expiry, long call. I bought at $11, sold for $24.60 and I made $8,100 on it together with the 200 a total of 8300 profit on my um, also one of the first trades. So um, that's why my account sh shot also up um, by the June expiry quite quite fast. All right, um, let's look at one loser here, look, Global E. Global E was a trade um, that I entered a vertical in, uh, uh, 30 uh, contracts short and down here, well, it's actually here contracts, 30 contracts long, 30 contracts short, uh, a vertical in the same expiry. Um, the short made money, uh, I sold at 51 cents, uh, bought back at 10 cents, it made 1,200. And then later on, since globally it didn't uh, rise in price, uh, um, but stayed, stayed low, stayed below the $20 strike, it was a full loss. So my, fir my first full loss, and that's um, um, a big number, $9,210 uh, of, of a first loss, that's huge. And you see I marked the... the, the the full losses with a red color here is a zero. <clears throat> All right. Um, there's more losses down here. Uh, Netflix. Uh, I think Philip had it on as well. Uh, we, we were betting um, that Netflix was missing uh, in earnings due to subscriber numbers, but that didn't happen. So uh, a full loss for for write off here as well. Well, actually, this is the short leg. This short leg, or even the short leg may uh, lost some money, but the long legs uh, as well. <clears throat> some more uh, full write-offs. Now Wingstop, this one is, is one of my big winners. Uh, long call, September expiry, it made 20,000 on the long side, but since I had, it was a calendar and I couldn't get out of the, uh, of the short, um, it, I lost 10,000 on the on the short side, but altogether I still made 10,000 plus on on this trade. All right. Then uh, Scholz Technologies, um, uh, a long call, October expiry. Um, I made nine thousand dollars on that one. Then another uh, thirteen thousand dollar win here for Celsius. And India August expiry again. I booked some losers and. Uh, this is also to, just to show you that don't know the process. Um, you you will have and you can have and you must have losers in in your in your trade account. And still, I make these big loser loser positions here. I still am up that that much eighty percent. So uh, it's just part of the game, and uh, you just have to learn to to do it and to to accept it that you will have losers in your account. <clears throat> Um, by the way, the big spike I was talking about, this is this trade here, Wolf Speed, that was an earnings play. I entered uh, on the 17th of August, I ended at $5.82. The next morning, um, earnings uh, was spiking up 
uh, I sold at twenty dollars eighty seven, made forty five thousand in this one trade. Unfortunately, I had also a short to to secure myself in case we didn't spike up. So the short lost thirty one thousand seven hundred, but overall this trade made fourteen thousand dollar plus just overnight. Um, so <clears throat> right, and this is also a reason why let's go back up here my average days in trade is only at 16 days 58 16 days is actually lower than than we, we than we aim for um but the reason is that i make earning trades sometimes they are short-lived and the other reason is that the volatility is very high and and it was or and still is in this summer and this means that our that my short trades are are much less time in in in, in the trade and i close them much earlier and uh, due to this volatility, um, the days are getting shorter. And another um, thing I want to show you, um, this, it's quite interesting to see. You see in, in the months between July and August, I had losses of 100,000 in one month, but I had profits of winners of 120,900 in the same month and only 7,000 of credits. And this was making me 27,000. But in the next month, in August expiry, September expiry, I had only losers of 34,000, so much less losers. But profits was even lower, 31,000 in profits. But in this month, I was managing to get much higher credits, 15,900 in credits due to the system that we are trading on, aggressive calendar spreads. And this helped me to make still 12,500 in in profits in that month, although I had uh, le um, less profits than, lo um, than, than losers, or uh, higher losers than profits. All right, let's jump back to the slides. So we've seen that. Oh, I didn't talk about the R score, same R score as Philip, 1.4. Of course, it's too low, but um, I, I, I say it's because of this volatility thing that um, you know we, we are trading shorter lift and um, so um, uh, I, I think in a, in a different market uh, this R score should go up and it must go up. That's also a goal of mine. And the, the Kelly number we actually don't uh, look uh, and, and look too much at it. Um, right. Next slide. So my uh, some selected winners. Um, LabCorp, I already talked about it, uh, health sector, and then the thesis was that after COVID, really, the laboratory uh, had much less work, and, and um, the, the price action was actually at very high level, and I thought, um, this is a short, it will come down, and, and it happened, and it, it made me, me $10,394. Um, Wingstop, um, yeah, um, I had two times a trade there, two, uh, two successful trades, 14,500 the first time, 10,000 the second time. Fast food restaurants and cheap food, you know, and in times of high prices, this is, um, uh, you know, a restaurant chain that, that was, uh, was quite successful in, in, in audio or over the summer. Then I had some exposure to shows technology, to solar tele technology, electrical balancing, and EV charging systems. Um, that, that is a, a sector that is in, in trend. You know, um, I wanted to have exposure to EVs, and uh, that worked well as well. Eleven thousand profit. Then Wolf Speed. I was talking about it. That was a um, earnings play, a semiconductor, also in EVs, tech sector. And then um, another short a winner, Nordstrom, and this was um, actually I entered that after the big Target and Walmart miss that um, you might remember uh, not too long ago. And uh, I thought, okay, let's see um, who else is reporting, and it's it's actually just an earnings play, um, and and um, it, it worked, you know. Um, so negative earnings from prices, down guidance was downgraded, and I made eleven thousand nine hundred, also in a short, 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 very short time frame. Right then, um, some losers. Global E, I already talked about, um, and what I can say to this is actually that the next month uh, I would have made a winner out of this. So I was just too early. Then. Um, yeah, uh, if I had entered the, right again after the expiry, uh, I would have made probably double or triple triple the, the money. 
Then Netflix was a loser. Um, yeah, we we were betting a subscriber loss, but it didn't happen. So just just the opposite happened, and uh, uh, it, it it continued to go up. And a uh, big loser for me. Coinbase. Um, I wanted to have exposure to some crypto. Um, crypto generally had a negative sentiment this summer. It went down a lot. Um, there was talks about federal regulations on, which had, would have an impact on crypto. And um, so I, I was going to short it. Um, didn't work out. Uh, in contrary, they announced a deal with BlackRock um, to, to continue uh, some joint venture with them. And um, of course, that didn't help. So it went the other way. Full loss uh, for Coinbase. <clears throat> then um, nat liquid natural gas energy sector, I had some exposure. I was making money on, on Occidental um, on the way down as a put. So I thought, um, you know, and, uh, gas should be working the same way. Uh, also in regard that the Ukraine conflict might uh, end or get some positive news. And, and that would immediately, um, um, you know, making uh, natural gas price going down. Didn't work at all. Um, became a full loss, <laughs> no. So it went the opposite way from, from oil. And Paramount, um, the thesis here was uh, in, in contrary to Netflix, that Paramount would get a boost. You know, they have good good rights, they have movie rights uh, with, with companies, so um, uh, for, for good movies. And, um, but also here we, we, uh, we saw that they, it didn't work. They, they just traded sideways and it also got a full loss. All right, then, Quickly about my timeline. Um, I, in, in July 20, 2020, actually, I sat in Spain in a hotel and uh, I was, uh, you know, watching YouTube videos and, and suddenly I, I got hooked uh, about investing and trading uh, videos and, and never before. It's just, just at that time because it was the, the time after the COVID dip and then the stock market was going to new highs and so um, um, I started actually to invest in, in Tesla stock at the time. And um, during uh, this time from July 2020 to February 21, I doubled my account. So I doubled my money in, in, in just by, by buying Tesla stock. <laughs> and it was a uh, very easy and, and, and uh, lucky time. And then um, the whole thing made me interested. And I found uh, then the ITPM videos. I bought... Uh, the three courses from ITPM, um, the options trading and the forex trading, and um, I looked in and, and enrolled in the Thailand mentoring program in April uh, 2021 for the Thailand program in April 2022. Right, and so that was one year ahead. I had one year time. In this year, in 21, uh, I joined also the war rooms, two war room webinars, and I joined several smaller ITPM seminars. <clears throat> and I continued to invest long stock only, the, the way I had traded uh, before. And of course, in this time, 21, it was a, a bad time for the stock market. I lost more than half my account again. So uh, this this should never happen, but that's what, what, what happens when you when you invest long stock only. Um, in from October, the PTM 2.0 came out. Uh, I did the exam just before the, men, the mentoring in Thailand, and then I, um, I just, the rest, you know, I went to Thailand. I had a mentoring with Anton, and from August, uh, I traded on my own. And um, what I want to say is, keep, we keep a great contact with the awesome group from Thailand. Shout out to the to the guys. From the Thailand group, um, this is a, a great thing to keep in contact together. And in September, uh, ITPM opened the Discord server, uh, which is only for the the members um, that that or, uh, alumni that made a mentoring program, right? Um, my weekly schedule is a little bit different. I'm not so much flying at the moment, uh, so I have more time. I'm working every day, uh, Monday to Friday, reading news, uh, reading the Discord server. Um, updating my macro view constantly <clears throat> uh, on weekends. It's updating the options monitor, you know, the, the results from the week and, and planning uh, for what I want to do the next week and then uh, already structuring new ideas. And then during the week, of course, yeah, you need some time for trade execution, um, checking the portfolio and, um, and, and do, do the management of the portfolio. In total, uh, 12 to 15 hours, uh, as Anton said, roughly there at the beginning, 
um, I expect if I will work more again next year that there's uh, this this number will go down a little bit. In summary, um, although I had studied economics at the university in the 1990s, I learned about options at that time. I never really invested and traded any of my earned money. So um, this changed suddenly and dramatically when I sat in a hotel in Spain in July 2020. Um, and I um, got hooked with it, first by other trading sources, option trader programs and, and, and platforms. But soon I found ITPM and its methods. Over the last two years, I transitioned, or let, let's say this year, I transitioned from a stock investor to an active trader with a long short portfolio over 20 to 60 day time horizon. <clears throat> I have learned about all aspects of trading from macro and its indicators to the fundamental structuring and timing from, from ITPM. And I have learned to follow a plan and a process and to have discipline in my, in my trades, which is very important. Um, in ITPM, you find a company that has the expertise and the willingness to, to help retail traders, uh, which you yeah, don't find, you find often. Uh, and so ITPM can bring you to the road to, the, to riches, as they say in this webinar. Right, and um, the new ITPM society on Discord, trading with the buddies, um, so you, it gives you a feeling that you're not alone. You're not alone out out there. And um, I want to shout out to the guys again. You guys rock! And here with I yield back to Anton. Thank you, gentlemen. Great job in presenting, and uh, awesome returns. Obviously, um, I'm going to share my screen, uh, and we're going to wrap up here, and then we can move into the uh, Q and A. Uh, if you've got any questions for uh, Gunter and Phil, uh, just pop them in the Q&A area. They're here, you know, for another hour or so, 45 minutes, maybe to an hour. Uh, so they'll be happy to answer all of your questions, as will I, uh, once we come to the end of the presentation. Yeah. Okay, so uh, in terms of the progress of Gunter and Phil, you know, from a teaching perspective, okay, seeing these guys you know post mentoring program go off on their own for a couple of months it's obviously great to see that they're uh, you know continuing their success it's how we plan things out at itpm so people have the highest probability of uh continuing their success okay um but it's still early days okay it's definitely still too early to call them open quotes really good traders close quotes you know, what does that really mean? I alluded to it, mentioned it at the beginning of the webinar. Um, at ITPM, uh, we consider that you've got to do this for at least a year with 150 trades under your belt and hitting the numbers. So getting strong statistics. And those numbers and the statistical significance of the 150 trades and having a year under your belt that is the evidence that's required to enable anybody to claim that they're just starting to become a professional level trader okay so what we do at itpm uh we set the education and expected returns bar really high and then we just work backwards from that okay we know how to get there on smaller accounts you know these 50 to 100 percent returns and even over 100 percent and doing it in a very sensible way okay so we just teach what's required to get there now if you come into itpm and you fall short of those big numbers you know 100 percent plus returns that's okay you know if you fall a bit short of the statistics it's okay as well you know both gunter and phil they've traded through a very difficult market in 2022 they've come out making amazing returns uh but, you know, when you look at their numbers, you can see, you know, little uh, weaknesses there, of course, you know, with the R score at 1.4, we can go into that later, you know, but these things can easily be changed with a few things, um, a, a few uh, implemented uh, habits on a month to month basis. They can change very, very quickly. Okay. So if you come in and, you know, let's say you come in and you get a 65% return and your numbers are okay. 
and you've done that over 150 trades in a year. That's amazing still, right? I mean, think about think about the market that these guys have been trading this year and the level of experience that they had before coming into ITPM. The level of experience, I mean, there wasn't any experience, right? It was everything that they'd done before was basically pointless, right? Um, and they'll tell you that themselves. You know, Gunter, you know, punting around in Tesla, uh, Phil, more of a passive investor. You know, this has got nothing, it, it's so polar opposite of what professional traders do, okay? So their experience didn't count for anything when they came in. And in a very difficult market, they've made amazing returns and they've got, you know, good, solid numbers. But it's early days, okay? If you get to the end of year one and you fall a little bit short of that, it's okay. You know, retail traders, when you look at retail trader statistics globally, right, vast, vast majority lose money. Vast majority blow up their accounts. I mean, you're looking at about one to two percent of retail traders globally uh, after a two year period are actually up. OK, and it's around 90 percent in in the first year that will lose pretty much all of their account or, or all of it. OK, um, so as long as you have the good stats and it's provable that your results are down to a process, down to a process like ours, and it's not down to luck, it's down to skill. And the process is repeatable, okay? As long as you can show that in the first year, it's great, okay? Because it means it's just not down to luck. You've actually done this properly to a professional trader standard, okay? Let's have a look at their returns. Uh, we looked at absolute returns, but let's have a look uh, at relative returns to some benchmarks here, okay? So on the top here, we've got uh, NASDAQ 100, uh, the NASDAQ Composite, S&P 500, the Dow, Russell 2000, and uh, I threw in innovation in there as well. So uh, we threw in the ARK ETF. Um, on the left-hand side, uh, we've got the trading period, which is uh, the close on the 29th of April, 2022, and the close on the 19th of September, 2022. And um, you've got all the data in there for each of those uh, benchmark in indices. So we've, and we've got the index returns in percentage terms and they're all down during that period. So yes, a, a tricky trading period for everybody during that time. And then we've got the alpha for both Phil and Gunter. And we took the, uh, the number from the return on invested capital from their spreadsheets. And we just looked at the outperformance, okay? So you can see, for example, you know, if we look at uh, Phil and Gunter versus the NASDAQ, you're looking at 70 to 95% outperformance in a 21 week period. That's crazy guys. S&P 500, the same. Uh, if we look at ARK ETF, Gunter is actually outperforming Kathy Wood by 100% in 21 weeks, right? Um, it's amazing stuff guys. It really is amazing stuff to see. Um, so, Yes, these, these returns were achieved over a 21 week period. That was split into 12 weeks with me mentoring uh, and nine weeks self trading. So yes, again, early days, but you can't deny the stats. They're pretty amazing. So really in summary at this stage now, they just need to keep doing what they're doing, but just tighten up on a few things, get to the end of year one, and they're gonna be well on their way to getting rich and doing that via long short equity options portfolio management now a word of warning and a bit of a reality check for guys here okay you know the guys did put in a lot of work during their mentoring program i think the guys were putting in 20 hours a week to begin with and then it dropped below 15 once they got used to the processes got comfortable with things got quicker at doing things but this was a funny moment a bit of an epic moment in itpm history okay gunter is sitting there coming towards the end of his mentoring program and he's up a significant amount of money and he's got a lot of risk on and uh, he made the amateur mistake of booking something during the week of an options expiry a monthly options expiry and he booked uh, to have himself a hernia operation so we had this conversation and i said gunter you know what's the plan you can't really check into hospital have an operation and then just leave all your positions open 
over the uh, August expiry, okay? So I told him, you got your operation on Tuesday, you're gonna be in the recovery room Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You're gonna to have to take your laptop into the hospital with you, okay? You're going to have to trade the expiry from your hospital, hospital bed. And uh, I asked him to send a photo <laughs> of him trading the expiry from his recovery room. And uh, if you think I'm joking, I'm not joking. I told him to do it, he had to do it, okay? Because if he keeps all of his risk open, and he's in a recovery room and he misses the opportunity to trade out of things at, the, at good prices and he gets out of terrible prices the p l swings can be quite big so he can literally like ruin a few months of track record by making the mistake of booking something during uh, a monthly options expiry yeah you know, we've had situations in the past where uh, there was one guy i mentored a couple of years ago he works in new york he went to uh, los angeles uh, for his 40th birthday party he left his uh options expiry uh, he left his options expiry positions uh, open while he was on the plane and i uh and uh, i told him before like you've booked this flight you know to um la for your 40th birthday party and it's on the morning of the options expiry you're going to have to trade from 40,000 feet and he had some problems with the internet connectivity and he had a hundred thousand dollar account and he lost just over ten thousand dollars on the options expiry which was completely unavoidable. Complete, sorry, completely avoidable. And uh, he could have, the, the P&L swing, he could have actually booked between 10 and $20,000 pretty easily as a profit. So the P&L swing was 20 to $30,000 because he messed up his diary. So uh, if you think I'm joking about this, guys, I'm not, and uh, the evidence is there. We got Gunter to take a photo. And this is the, uh, this is the level of sacrifice that you need, guys. In the, in the beginning, you need to make sure that you put a lot of work and effort into your program. And uh, it's building blocks. So, you know, we start with the foundation, trade idea generation. Uh, that is the oxygen, oxygen to your trading account. It's the oxygen to your portfolio. If you have no ideas, you have no portfolio. If you have a lot of great ideas coming out, coming out on repeat, what's going to happen? that's going to enable us to teach you how to build a portfolio properly. So that's the second building block, okay? Part of that process is learning uh, optimization of equity option structures for particular ideas, and then we build the portfolio. It happens over a, about a six week period, okay? Six, seven week period. And then of course, that enables a situation where you can learn how to actually make decisions solid good decisions on repeat when you're trading so not being an idiot not trading like a loser and selling everything on the bottom and buying everything on the top panicking all the time flailing not knowing what to do making good solid decisions and trading well okay so it's building blocks guys trade ideas uh, building the portfolio optimization of structures risk management and good uh, exits from positions good executions in and out, okay? And then on top of that, managing your business. You've got to manage those statistics well, okay? You'll have seen many things in uh, Gunters and Phil's track record where they're coming into options expiries and some of the decisions they're making are purely based on where they think the stocks are going. Some of the decisions are based purely to protect their statistics, okay? That all comes into managing the business well, okay? So to learn all of that stuff, You've got to put you've got to put a lot of work in to begin with guys and then it gets easier it gets easier okay we call it at itpm getting over the hump it's the first three to six months okay and if you need a if you need a helping hand with this you know gunter and phil were on the uh thailand mentoring program this year you can see the results now if you put the work in you can see the results even in a difficult market you know we are long short portfolio managers we make absolute returns whether the market goes up or down, okay? We make money whether the market goes up or down. We don't care. We're very agnostic, okay? If you want to come on the next Thailand program, the information is there. Just send a message through the ITPM website and uh, we'll get back to you with the application process, okay? So I've got a few places left. Uh, Shecky has got some places left and Raj and Anthony as well. So depending on your margin size, 
uh, depends which classroom you're in and which mentor you're going to have. Okay. Uh, so there's the link uh, for all mentoring programs, uh, itpm.com forward slash trader dash mentoring. Uh, if you want to do a remote program in January, we're now accepting applications. So uh, you can do a Thailand program starting in April or a remote program with any of the mentors starting in January. Uh, it's an amazing deal. Um, Gunter mentioned this earlier about uh, something that we launched uh, recently, which is the Discord server. Uh, it's called Society at ITPM. And uh, it's only for students that are part of a trader mentoring program. So if you do want to do a remote program in January or be part of the Thailand program, you're getting the Discord access included as well. Okay. So there's a lot of value in this case. Like you can see here, for example, on the screen, uh, the rooms on the left hand side. Uh, I've highlighted the room there called structures. You know, seen, I've seen a lot of questions coming in the QA about, you know, how do I know which structure to put on for this situation, this stock? Uh, there's no rule book here, guys. It, it's really all just situational. But myself, uh, Raj Malhotra, Edward Sheck, uh, we're pretty active in the structures room. You know, guys can put their uh, ideas in the room and uh, their structures, and we look at their ideas and structures, and we're in there, you know, every day chatting to guys. All the mentors are on there, and you'll be part of a really strong, well educated, profitable community. Okay, guys, so that's the end of the webinar, and we can move to the Q&A. Um, is there anything there you want to discuss, Gunter or uh, Phil? Well, you can I'm start answering these questions if you want. Yeah, I'm reading through the questions, and I see that Phil already answered a, a, a lot of them, and I also started that. Um, so. Um, yeah, but no one else can see that, right? So yeah, you, you can... Uh, yeah, let's, you, can, uh, you can read out the questions and give your answer as well. Yeah, let, let me find one. Maybe Phil has one before. So, yeah, Marian asked if there are, um, if we use paid sources or free sources on the internet. And basically, you can get every data for free. Um, yeah, there are some services that where you pay a small amount and get some, uh, get everything in one place. But yeah, basically, you can get everything for free. And one thing Jan asked me about what I do want to do to improve my R score. And actually, I forgot this during my presentation. I will show it a little bit later in the in my spreadsheet. Um, yeah. Actually, you can show that if you want. Yeah. It's quite an interesting thing to look at, right? When yeah. you do like these little stress tests of statistics and performance, it's quite educational, I think, when guys see that. So, can you see my screen? Okay, here on the right side, you can see my R score 1.42. And actually, um, all, all I would need um, is like one decent winner in my portfolio. So if I change my win overall win score here um, and add 14K to 230, then my R score would be above 1.5 already. So sure, um, what I need to do is like, generate some some good ideas and have like one or two decent winners try to re reduce some of my losers and I will be there already yeah so the, the thing with that Phil is uh is that you've done 90 trades still now right so yeah. the contribution of the contribution of one extra trade uh is going to be quite large relative to somebody who's done like 400 trades right so um, yeah, you, you've, tr you've got to try and get that R score to like 1.7, 1.8 by the end of the year. So you need like two or three really good big winners between now and the end of the year. Mm. And then obviously control losses, right? Yeah. Yeah, but so it, it's, it, might come, it, might, it might come from a tail risk trade, right? Yeah. So if you can, if you can do a tail risk trade where it's like 5% of your account, and you get like a bear market rally, you know, the market rally is like 10% of its lows or something. And you get something on where you make like uh, 50, 60, 70 grand on a tail risk trade, right? You can just pump your R score really massive quite quick, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm looking for right now. Um, I mean, I have one tail risk trade right now in my portfolio, but let's see. 
if this works out. Yeah, don't, don't talk about it. We're not. No one's allowed to copy trade you here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, but it's quite interesting that actually, um, yeah, because I only traded like or have like ninety trades that it comes down to one, two, three good trades, and I will be up at 1.5, 1.6, or 1.7. Yeah, same for me. So there's some questions here from guys. Uh, there's a bit of a theme in terms of questions here uh, about like the difference between doing online programs and doing a uh, mentoring program, especially when it comes to like trade idea generation. Yeah. Um, so I guess the question that most people are asking on that theme is what's the difference? like? in terms of like the quality of trade ideas between um sorry i was reading so through some questions like, like if you if you only did the online programs and you generated an idea versus doing yeah. a mentoring program you, and then gener generating an idea you know the thing for me was like I, I generated an idea at home um all by myself and i pitched it to myself but i really had no one to pitch it to and get some response or feedback um yeah so i thought it's a great idea and then during the mentoring um i remember a few ideas i pitched to anton and he after one minute or two minutes he smashed it to the ground and <laughs> yeah, and told me what a shit idea this is yeah so <laughs> to get some feedback and response and you learn and and improve your process overall and your understanding of the numbers gets better and better yeah but that was that's what I loved in, from the Thailand program. Um, the, the everybody had to present ideas for, that you worked out there on the place, and I think that was a really nice exercise to understand, you know, what you have to do and how it's done and what is important. And then you also got the <clears throat> the, critis, the criticizing from Anton and, and Ed in our group, so that was nice. Yeah, we're printing, you know, this thing about, that I mentioned earlier, guys, about, you know, us only 